next to speed ramping, advanced keyframes is probably the next big feature that LumaTouch are putting into version 5 of LumaFusion. Now the one thing I will tip my hat to and give them kudos is that they haven't gone down the normal route of how you would expect to see advanced keyframing. They've kind of gone their own way and I quite like it. In this video tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate to you how to use advanced keyframing and also I'm going to have a little bit of fun animating this scene you can see here. I'm Stu, welcome to the channel, let's get started. Okay, let me give you a little tour of what's going on here. The first main base layer, the ladybug scene, is literally the cartoon ladybug graphic you can see here in the preview panel. Above that, I've got a medium cloud. I've then got the same medium cloud duplicated, but I've shrunk it down and added a little bit more blur just to kind of give the sense that it's further away. Above that, I've got the ladybug scene again, but without parts of the sky. And this allows me to float the clouds past the plant life. If I switch off the visibility, you'll see the area that's black is basically a PNG with transparency, and that's what's sitting on that layer. And then finally, we've got our little bee. There he is. It's called Happy, and we're going to use the advanced keyframing to animate them in a non-conventional way that you wouldn't normally get to do in a timeline at least in LumaFusion, and we're going to have some fun with it. Just before we get into the advanced keyframing proper, I have color-coded the layers, altered some of the names, and also we've got three layers of sound design. The sound, just a sort of summer afternoon ambience, and some boings, which we'll use when we animate the bee jumping about. Feel that playing in there. And this is what you'll get if you want to download the project file and actually work along with me on this. The one thing I've learned about using advanced keyframing compared to the old standard keyframing is that you've got to be quite methodical in the way you're working. We've got our little happy bee and I want to be able to drop a keyframe initially with the bee in the starting position. And I'm just going to manually move the bee and have it bounce down on top of the ladybug and then bounce back up onto probably this leaf here. As you can see, we can move the bee around. We'll take it from there in terms of refining the actual keyframes and putting in some easing and adjusting the path and Bezier curves. So what I want to do is just literally start the bee on this leaf here and then just tap and highlight it, bounce it down to the ladybug bounce it over to this leaf here and then sort of zoom it out the way. Our starting position is the first keyframe and it's just a case of sort of naturally timing things and getting a good flow for where we're wanting to be. So it's probably like maybe, I don't know, five, maybe six frames to do that. We start it there and then I'm just going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard and just nudge things along. We go to 13 frames initially. And the cool thing is because of advanced keyframing now, if we don't like where we positioned the keyframes initially, we can nudge them about. I'm going to just naturally move our bee down on top of our ladybug. That generates the second keyframe. I'm then going to move things along a little bit more. Assuming it's kind of roughly the same sort of time again to go to that leaf, we can just bounce it over to here. And then from there, we want to zip it right out of frame. So to do that, we'll make it a little bit shorter, say here, and then just navigate it out of frame. And that's as good our keyframes. So if we play that through, it's going to be very rough and ready. And there we go. As you can see, it's very straight path and then out of frame. Now, if I just come back out of this a little second, I'm going to mute my sound design because we're going to be playing on this layer a lot and I just don't want it playing all the time. So we'll give it one more run through. That looks not bad as it is, but we can do it so much better. To get more control out of our keyframes, we're going to tap on this little icon up at the top here and that generates our curves for us. And then from there, we're going to manipulate and play with those curves. Okay, we've got our four keyframes laid out at the moment and we need to start working on the actual path or direction which the bee is going to travel. And this is why Chris and the team have built the zoom feature. 
You just grab that, you can bring it down and place it wherever you want it. Because when it comes to working with BZ curves and paths and things like that, you want to get a little bit tighter in. I'll just move that up out of the way. And if you don't want that to be there, obviously, you can switch it off while you're working. We've got our first keyframe, and you'll notice the curve always starts from the middle of your object. And you can move it up, down, you can shrink it, and you can expand it out. So we want a nice curve bounce. I think we'll move the hump aspect towards apex. And then if we just gently nudge it through, you can see what's going on there. And there's our first path. Now the other thing that we need to do is consider the speed of the actual curve. I can switch on our scale velocity graph and you can see the different keyframes all laid out. In the first keyframe, you've only got access to slowing things down or speeding things up. What I'm going to do initially is just slow things down ever so slightly. Then we'll start to nudge along. And then when we check it out this time, I'm just again going to do it with the arrow keys. That's looking fine. Go to our zoom tool. Zoom back out. Just reframe everything. Get rid of our zoom tool. We'll close down our graph for a second or two and play it through. That's starting to look a little bit better. We then need to work on our second curve. And you'll notice now, because you're on a second keyframe, you've got two sets of handles. You've got the handles that deal with the tightness of the curve on the left-hand side, and then you've got a handle that deals with the exit curve on the right-hand side. That's looking pretty good. Okay, now that we've got our first two keyframes and BZ curves placed, we're going to start working on the third. So we'll go to the third keyframe, and then we're just going to play with the positioning. Now I can kind of eyeball this, but again, if you want to have a close-up look, you can zoom right in and just move the position into the middle and see what's going on. Switch off our zoom box or zoom control panel, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to play with the curve. And just check the position of the V. It's looking pretty good. Then we're going to check our velocity. Now at this point, our little B happy is going to zoom off into the sunset. But again, we don't want it to be a completely straight path. So what we're going to do is just switch on our zoom box. Go over to our target, which is off screen. And this is how you get to elements that are now out with the actual main canvas is use the zoom control panel so we're going to move along to that keyframe in fact now let's go back to the other one there we go what i'm going to do here is take the right hand bza control and just curve it down a bit as if happy she's launching up and out and then we'll go a little bit higher move to our fourth keyframe and i'm going to curve this up a little bit and shorten it down and the other thing i'm going to look at if we go back to the third stage I want to just angle happy a little bit towards the jump point. I'm going to go into my rotation and just, just give him a few turns. And then when he goes to there, completely out of frame, I can then decide how fast I want things to be. Okay, I reckon we will speed things up a little bit. You can see the whole velocity graph changing when you do that adjustment. And if I zoom in again, I just want to point something out to you. If you look at the yellow curve line itself, you can see that when I speed things up, those little anchor points or dots, what you want to call them, move up together, which indicates closer together, faster. If you go the other way, further apart, slower. That's a visual representation of the speed of the actual path itself. You can see, obviously, the velocity graph changing. I'm just going to switch that off. I'm going to move back towards the middle. Take it back to 100%. Curve in the middle. And then we just want to play it through again. It would be boing, boing, and it's away. That's kind of just effectively what we want to do. So we've kind of laid out the path. Sells it, though, is going to be the sound design. And those boings actually hitting in the correct spots. What I'm going to use next is markers to just mark out the points where I want to place my sound design. On the first keyframe point, I'm just going to move one frame away. And we'll drop a marker here. So this M key and then the enter key. And then we're going to fly all the way over to our ladybug, who we haven't named. We'll call him Cyril. And I'll drop another marker at this point. We'll just change the colour to something else. Make it red for ladybug. And then again, over to the leaf. And 
pick up another marker there and we'll make it green we have our first marker which is one frame off of the leaf itself again i think we'll just set that as a green color and down onto ladybug and then over to the other leaf and then out of frame let's take it backwards so if we zoom in and look at what we've got boing wise need to switch on the sound design now there we go I think that long one is a good starting point. I'll move that up and over. Again, position it up where we need it to be. I'll just place it a bit there and see if it works. Yep, and then this set of boings is actually three different sounds. You've got... I think we're going to use the two in the middle. So I'll cut away this one. And I'll just bring in that one. We'll split these two and take our second boing sound and just drag it over until we're in the right position, which is there. Now that's beginning to overlap. So what we're going to need to do is move our lazy summer, our B sound, and just bring this into about here. See how it plays out. Switch on the sound design for that layer. We'll make this one a little bit louder. So we're going to go into the audio and we'll boost the gain up to 6. There we go. And then the final boing, which we can place up on the top row again. Again, don't be scared to colour code things. So the first boing, make green. Second one's already red. Third one, back to green. And you can also rename the boing and suggest its position. So we can say boing KF for keyframe 1. Go to this one. Boing kf2 and then i haven't positioned it yet but we want to position it onto the marker on keyframe three it's going to be about there i reckon in fact not just slightly before that looks about right again we'll just go in kf3 there we go so not only does it give it a, give it a name it also gives it a position relation to the keyframes so let's play it through yeah that kind of works one more time I don't know whether the third keyframe needs to go slightly that way. Yeah, that's a bit better. Just literally nudge it a tiny little bit. And if we add into that our buzzing sound, which I'll probably take to here, just trim that, get rid of that bit, switch on the noises. And because we're dealing with the whole timeline here, I can just increase the gain here. See what it sounds like now. Now you could stutter the buzzing bee sound a little bit and the fact that it's bouncing. We can maybe chop it up to here, bring it in a bit, and then chop it up here. So we're cutting each. And then it's... It kind of has that sort of comedy buzz going on, as if it's a little happy there, concentrating on his jumping ability, because his wings aren't working. Now if we just listen to the overall lazy summer's afternoon effects... I think we're going to start it a little bit later on. So I'm just going to bring that into there and then move it back. And this time I want to just reduce the overall gain by 6 dB. And if we play through. Yeah, that gets the idea. Yep, that works. The only thing I'm going to do to end all of this is we will just move some clouds a little bit to finish things off. We're not going to do anything fancy with the clouds other than just move them from point A to point B during when the actual B moves about. So I'm going to go into frame and fit. You can see the cloud being selected. Now I do want to point one thing out at this moment in the tutorial. One thing you could never do in Luma Fusion up until now is that I've got the cloud selected. If I want to go back to our little B, I just press and hold and you can actually move between the different layers. And that's why when you actually want to move something now, you can't actually move anything from within the bounding box. It has to be out of the bounding box. So if we drop a keyframe here, and then what we want to do is just move through and just have the cloud move a little bit. So there's our second keyframe, and I'm just gonna use my position, just slide things along a little bit and just check it out. Pretty good. And then the second cloud, if we go back to our first position, we should be able to press and hold on it. So you don't have to come back out of frame and fit and then go back into it again to go to another video layer. I'm going to drop a keyframe here. 
again i'm just going to move the position we'll just nudge it along ever so slightly start it here and then we'll just nudge things along we'll just position our second cloud a little bit further on and then we'll just play the whole thing through and see what's happening I want the second cloud just to move a little bit more. So we'll just nudge it over a little bit. And I'm going to put in a third keyframe here and just nudge things even further along and then do the same to the cloud below. Drop a keyframe there and just nudge this further along. Just so the cloud's constantly moving through the whole animation. Then we can take things back and play it through again. Works. You don't have to be perfect, but just a little bit of movement in the background. And all I'm going to do just to clean things up is remove the markers. Because if you want to play with this project file, you can add your own markers in. And there we go. I'll give it one more play. And that's all I want to do in terms of showing you the actual basics of advanced keyframing. I'm just going to drag out the audio a little bit further. I think it will take it right beyond. And then we'll drop a transition at the end to fade things out. We'll say. Drop it here, press that, zoom in a little bit because it's a very short transition and stretch it out. So it's just a sort of standard cross dissolve on the audio. There we go. If you enjoyed the video today, don't forget to give it a like. It's a bit of a long one, but you can see why in terms of we want to work methodically and slowly, carefully, and go through all the different components of advanced keyframing. If I've earned a subscription, then subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to ring the bell to be notified when the next video tutorial is up online. And I will catch you on the next one. See you later.